Hey everybody and welcome back to another Darkfall tutorial. So today we're going to be doing Rapids VFX as you can see in the example here. So as you can see, I'm using the newly released version 2.8. So if you want to download this too, I'll throw a link in the description. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and choose the VFX workstation. Now in this example, we won't need these two windows here. So we're going to right click, join this area, and then do the same thing for here. So now go ahead and load up your movie clip. So this is the movie clip I'm using, and I'll throw a link in the description if you want to use it as well. So the first thing you might notice is that the, the video is not the same as when you downloaded it. The colors are different, and that's because Blender in this workstation has changed it to Filmic. So what we need to do is go over to the render panel. Then if we scroll down, we'll find the color management section. So here we can see where it says Filmic. Just click this and change this back to standard. So now everything looks good. So you can go back here later on and change this back to Filmic and then play around with the look, it's entirely up to you. But when we start we want to see what the original video actually looks like, so keep that in mind. So now we can go ahead and prefetch the movie clip. Uh, right now we're using 250 frames. If your movie clip is longer, you can go ahead and press this set scene frames. And this will set the timeline to be the same length as your movie clip. So now we can go over here and press prefetch and we'll notice that this purple bar will fill up all the way. If it doesn't fill up all the way, you will need to go to edit, then to user preferences, then over to your system, and then just increase the memory cache limit. And then when you prefetch, it will fill up all the way. So now we can play through the movie clip. It might be hard to notice, but the camera actually moves a little bit. And when it comes to adding the rapids or anything else that you want to add to this movie clip, you will need to add a tracking marker. So keep that in mind. Even though it doesn't look like it's moving, we can actually tell. So if we jump back to the first frame. Let's set up our tracking settings. For the motion model, we can actually leave it at location. The match, I'm going to change this to previous frame. And then we can also enable normalize. Now go over here to where it says track. Up here, we'll be able to see a preview when we add a tracking marker. But the last thing I want to do is go over here to clip display. And I just want to enable the search size. So for this video clip, we'll only need one tracking marker. So we could add it on this rock here or on the wall behind. Just hold control and then left click. Then I'm going to scale this up and then also scale down the search size by clicking here and just dragging it down a bit. Now let's go ahead and track this forward. So we can see in the graph editor there's some bumps and that's because there's some movement in the camera so that's fine. So as I mentioned we're going to add a video here um, maybe we want to bring this rock back in so what I'm going to do is add a mask. So we could go to the masking tab here and set things up or we can just stay on the motion tracking and then just change this from tracking to masking and now we're in the masking mode so it's the same as previous versions you can tab into it and just change between tracking and masking let's click new to add a new mask and we can go ahead and rename this I'm just going to call it rock I'm going to hold control and left click just to add some points around here I'm just going to go back and refine it. So you kind of want to be as accurate as possible with this. You always want nice clean masks, um, but you don't have to go too crazy. And the way I do it, I like to add as many points as I can, but if you want, you can just add a few points and then select them all, then press V and change it to automatic. This will give you a nice, uh, more organic sort of shape, but you will need to do a bit more work, I guess, like this. So it's probably easier this way by changing these to the automatic so you can get better shapes, but it's up to you how you do it. Once we have this, we can press A to select all of them. Since we already have the marker selected, we're gonna hold control and then press P. Now we don't really see anything, but what's happened is this mask has been parented to this tracking marker. So now as we play through this footage, the mask moves along, which is what we want. So now we have this, we need to go ahead and load up our second movie clip, which is of the water rapids. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up now. So go to the top and open up a new clip. So I'll be using this clip, it's of the Niagara Falls. If you want to use this clip too, again, I'll throw a link in the description. Let's jump back to the first frame. 
I will need to prefetch this in, so let's press tab and go back to the tracking mode. Then click prefetch. Just wait for this to fill up. Now we also need to track this too, we can see the camera is moving. So I'm going to stay on the first frame. Hold control and left click. Press G if you need to move it around. But I'm going to track this point here, so let's track this forward. Now we just need to create a mask for this. So let's change back to the masking mode, or you can press tab. Now we can see we still have this mask selected, this first rock mask. So let's go ahead and create a new one. So now we can see we've created a new mask. Let's rename it. Now we can actually add the points. So hold control, left click. I'm going to trace around this hole around here. and then hold ALT and press C to close the mask. So we need to parent this mask as well, so I'm going to press A, just so we have all of it selected. Then hold CTRL and press P. Now this has been parented as well. A little bit later on we're going to need another mask, so I'm going to create it now, but I will explain what it's for a little bit later on. So I'm just going to click this new button again, add a new mask. Let's call this water color, like this. So now I'm going to hold CTRL, left click, and just trace around the inside. So now we have this, again, make sure we have the marker selected, then press A, then hold Control and press P. So now we have this mask. Uh, again, if you want to add some more masks, like for example, uh, if we jump back to the other movie clip. For example, I want to get rid of this bridge. I'm going to be using the same sort of technique. I'm just going to uh, add a new mask and then call this bridge. And then all I'm going to do is just trace around this bridge like this pretty quickly. And again, we can come back and refine the mask a little bit later on. And then press Alt-C just to close it. So this is the first mask, and again, we need to parent this, so press A, select all of it. Control p you guys got the idea by now. Now we have this mask, which will get rid of this section. But if you notice, we'll still have this um, this bit sticking out, so we'll need to add another mask just here, just to replace this section with some trees. So click New, call this Trees, and then for this one, pretty simply, we're just going to Control left click just around this area, Alt C to close it, press A to select it all, Control P. Now it's been parented. So now everything moves along and we've got the masks that we need. It's just a case of combining them together. So let's move on to the compositing. So the first thing we need to do is go up here to use nodes and check use nodes. Now we have a render layer and a composite node. Let's right click and select the render layers. We're not going to use this, so we can either press X and delete it, or we can hold shift and press S and change the type. So I'm just going to change the render layer to a movie clip. Then down here in the movie clip icon, I'm going to select this and then choose our first video clip. Now we can see a preview here, but we don't actually see a preview in the background. If you want to see a preview of it in the background, if you hold Control, Shift and left click on this node or any node, it'll actually preview that node. So now we go ahead and uh, start combining our nodes. So if you've followed previous tutorials, you probably already know how to do this. And one of the best ways to speed up your workflow is by reusing nodes that you've built before. For example, uh, we created a patch node in a previous tutorial. So I can go ahead and uh, use that again now if we want. I'm going to go to File, then to Append. Then we need to navigate to a folder that we saved our nodes to. So down to Node Tree, select all of these, and then Append from Library. So now when we Shift A, then go down to Group we actually have the nodes that we've created before. So I'm going to add in this patch node here like this, just to show you guys. So if you've made this before, you'll already have it. Go ahead and load it in. But I'm just going to show you how quickly we can arrange our shot by using these nodes that we've created before. So let's go ahead and duplicate the movie clip node. So Shift D. Then down here to the movie clip icon, let's change this to the, uh, the water asset. Then let's plug this into the bottom here. 
Shift A, go to input, add in a mask. And then for this mask icon here, click this, and then we want to choose the water mask, which is the first one we created. Then go ahead and plug this into the mask. This is a very easy way to speed up your workflow. If you haven't got this node, then once you've created it once, go ahead and save it and you can bring it into future projects. And again, I've got a few of these that I use a lot. So we can see we have a patch or a replace. And again, we can use a replace to get rid of the, uh, the bridge and the trees. But more than likely, you haven't got this node. So let's go ahead and delete it and show you how you can do it the long way, I guess. So let's get rid of these here. So we have our movie clip. Shift A. Go to color, mix. I'm going to drop this on the bottom one here and then control shift left click on this. Again, let's duplicate this one, shift D. E. Change this to the other movie clip. Then plug this into the bottom image. Shift A, go to image, add a mask. Again, add that mask, which is the water one plug this into the factor and you can see we have the same thing as we did before it's just we don't have any controls to move this around so we have to do that manually so let's go ahead and do that shift a go to distort add a transform node so as you can see when we move this on the X we also need to do it for the mask as well otherwise things won't line up so all we need to do is just shift D duplicate this and drop this onto the mask as well so now they both move together. So an easy way we can control both of these at the same time is by using uh, an input node. So shift A, go to input, then to value. Just drop this here. Then we can plug this into the X for this node and also plug it in the X for this node as well. So now this one node will control both of these and they will move together at the same time. So now if we shift D, duplicate this, Plug this into the Y for both of these nodes. Shift D. We could do the same for angle if you want to change the rotation, but we're not going to use, we're not going to be changing the rotation on this, so I'm going to skip that for now. Plug this into the scale like this. And now we have these three nodes which will control our new water asset, so we could actually grab these and bring them out of the way like this. Now we can position this wherever we want. One thing we do need to do is change the scale on the Y and match the perspective of both shots. Let's go ahead and add that node now. So before this mix node here, I'm gonna shift A, go down to distort, add a scale node. And again, we need to add it for both the mask and the image. So drop it here, shift D, drop it here. We need to control both of these values at the same time. So shift A, input, value node. And just connect this up to the Y on both of these. We can see what it does. It just squashes it on the Y. So let's just maybe 0.6 or 7. Let's try that. Looks okay. Now we can reposition this just so it sits on top of the water. Okay, so now you've got it in position. So what we need to do is add one more node just to make sure this moves around with our background footage. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make some space here with these. So right after this scale node here, let's shift A, go down to distort. And for this, we just want to translate node. Again, drop this here. Shift D, drop this here. Now if we shift A, add in an input track position node. So it's getting a bit uh, messy, so let's move this over. Now this track position node, we can use the information for that track for this background image. So let's go ahead and do that. Click this movie clip icon here. And we want to choose the first movie clip that we brought in. So click this. Then click this icon here, choose camera. Then this one, we want to choose track. And then finally, we just want to change this position from absolute to relative start. So now we've got this, we can just connect them up. So the X to the X, the Y to the Y, and the same thing for this one. 
there we go so when we play through this footage now when the background camera moves this asset that we added in will also move so right now we can see that the edge is very sharp let's go ahead and add a blur node so what we need to do is after this transform and after the scale and after the translate this is where we're going to add the blur node so drop this in then if we left click and drag just to select both of these at the same time I'm going to maybe put this to 40 let's try that that looks okay now we can go ahead and play around with the colors so go back to your water asset here shift a converter and then we just want to add an RGB to black and white add this in here shift a color RGB curves just drop this one after it as well and then we're gonna add one more shift a go to color and then add a mix node and then just drop this in okay so now we have this what I need to do first is change this white color so click this box here go down to the color picker tool and let's just sample from this blue color from the original background something like that will work for now then we can change this blend mode from mix to overlay we can now refine this color so if we click this again sample again change the color a little bit so now I have this I want to make it brighter to kind of match the uh, original water surface so if I click here just drag this up so as you can see when I brighten this up it's also going to brighten up the center of this water as well so that's why we created one of the masks to try and limit the um, the effect of this RGB curves so shift A go to input and add in a mask I'm going to drop this over here and if we change this to the water color and then plug this into the factor we get this it's actually working the opposite way that we need to because we're going to use this mask twice so what I need to do is shift A go to color and then just invert this mask so I'll just drop this in here so now we can see we have the nice uh, bright color on the outside and it's not so bright on the inside again we are going to change the inside because it looks horrible right now hopefully you get the idea that we're just uh, restricting the color for the outside so you can also see that there's a sharp line around this edge here so what we can do after this invert node I'm going to add in a blur node so shift A go to filter then blur and just drop this on here now if we select both of these and let's say maybe 20 see how that looks so now we can fix the color on the inside so shift A go to color add in a mix node again so this RGB to black and white node I'm going to take it from here and plug this into the bottom and then I want to change this blend mode from mix to soft light so now we get a more contrasted image so as you can see it's changed the outside again so that's why we added that other mask so as you can see this watercolor mask here you can just take this and plug it into the factor we don't need to invert this one and there we go so essentially what we did if I just mute this you can see we added in this um, we added more detail and contrast into this center here which I think makes it look a lot better we could also make this look even better if we add an RGB curves so I'm just bring this down so you can see so between the RGB and black and white and the soft light I'm gonna add another node so shift a color RGB curves drop this in here so now we have this um, we need to add in our rock here so all the way back to the water mask so then we have it transformed and then scaled and then translated then we added the blur we actually need to add it after the blur so I'm gonna shift a go to converter down to math and just drop this in here shift a go to input add in a mask we need to change this to the rock mask and then plug this into the bottom value here and then we need to change this to subtract so the colors like being extremely brightened so what we need to do is go to clamp and just click this now we can see we have the correct color so if I just mute this by pressing M you can see this was before and this is after 
So now we have this, um, I'm gonna go ahead and tidy it all up by creating that node that we saw at the beginning. So we wanna select everything except the videos and the masks. So I'm gonna select everything and then press B. Just deselect anything that I don't want, like so. Now if we hold control and press G, we've created a super node, which again, we've talked about super nodes in previous tutorials. And I'm not really gonna go into great detail in this video on how to create them and customize them. If you do wanna see more tutorials on this, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll, I'll go ahead and make one. Now we've created this super node. When we press tab to go back out of it, we can see we just have one node which contains all those other nodes. <laughs> Um, but what you can see is there's no inputs, there's nothing to change on this because we need to personalize it. So again, go into, press tab to go into it. We need to create some sort of inputs on here. So again, if you want to check out um, a previous tutorial I made, I'll throw a link up here. You can go check it out. Or if you want a more in-depth tutorial, go ahead and let me know. It's a good way to um, save space. Like you can see, it's just literally one node now. And then let's go ahead and get rid of the bridge. And it's the same way um, as we did before. So again, we can use one of the nodes that we created previously, like the uh, replace node, I guess I called it, and just drop this in here. And then we just plug all the other things in and replace what we need to. But again, you guys won't have this node unless you've created it. So I'm gonna delete that and just do it from scratch. So here we go. Shift A, go to color, drop in a mix node, connect that up to the viewer node as well. Then Shift A, input mask. Let's just drop this in here. Then I'm going to change this to the trees and then plug this into the factor like this. Now we can see the area that is being affected, this white section here. If we take this node here and just plug it in again, now if we shift A, go to distort and then translate. I'm going to drop this one onto the bottom string. Now we can move this around and it will move this section here. So I'm just gonna move it over here like this, just until we get trees in this section here. That looks okay. And again, we can always come back and play with this. Now we can actually get rid of the bridge. So we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna select this node, then Shift D. Then I might as well select this mask here and then Shift D. Select the icon. And let's just change this to the bridge mask. Plug this into the factor. So what we could do is click this white box here, then choose the eyedrop tool and just select from the original blue color from the movie clip that we used. It kind of blends in. One thing you'll notice that this ridge line here now looks very fake and that's because it's very sharp. So what you might want to do is add a you might want to add a blur node on this here, shift A to filter, then blur, drop this in. Um, you don't want to go too crazy with this blur amount because it will look even more fake than it is now. So keep it low, but just adding some blur will make it a little bit more realistic. Um, another thing you might want to do is create a custom mask in say Photoshop. So maybe create something a lot more realistic. We've done something like that in a previous tutorial. Again, go ahead and check it out. But now we've got something that looks a lot more interesting from what we originally had. So this is the original video. And then and then we just added a bit more of visual interest. Again, we can tie these colors and make it look a lot more realistic, but I think you guys get the idea. Just by adding a video image and maybe replacing a few things, make it look a, a lot better. So now let's go ahead and render this out. Then let's go to the output panel. Make sure the video resolution is the same as the movie clip that you're using. Also make sure that this percentage slider is at 100%. If you don't, you'll have some trouble with your masks later on. We also need to make sure we set the output because right now it's gonna to render to the temporary folder, so we don't want that. Let's set where we want this to be saved to. And then if we scroll down, we can see the file format here. We wanna change this from PNG to an FFmpeg video. Then down where it says encoding, if we click this icon here, we can choose from a list of presets. I wanna choose H.264 in MP4 format. So now we can see that it's been changed. I wanna go over here to the render panel. I wanna go down to display mode and change this to image editor. So now you've changed all the render settings and you've added any color grading you need to add. You can go over here to render. 
and either render the animation or you can use the shortcut which is Control F12. But go ahead and uh, render it out. So hopefully this tutorial helped. If it did, be sure to give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time.